Hey guys, if you remember, we have already completed with salient features of valence bond theory. And to start with today's lecture, that is application of VBT, that is very important. So just go through that once. I will attach the link for the same. Okay. So let's solve some examples to understand the concept of valence bond theory in detail. So while solving the examples on VBT, let's follow a standard pattern initially to understand the concept. Okay. Now first, again, if you remember this, we have used this complex. So we know most of the data about it. That is, we said in this case, the oxidation state of the metal, right? So you can see again, that is minus four and that is minus two on the other side of equal to. So nickel will have a charge of plus two. Okay, and you know how to calculate it. I have shown it in the in the class of CFT. Okay, now if you talk about CL, you should know whether it is a strong fill ligand or weak fill ligand. We know that it is a weak fill ligand from the spectrochemical series. Okay, so we said that strong fill ligand will will you know uh, make something called a spin pairing, but weak fill ligand will not do spin pairing. So this is one thing that you need to remember. Now. So because first thing is write down the oxidation state of the metal, determine whether it is a strong fill ligand or a weak fill ligand and then write down which orbitals are available. Okay. So orbitals of nickel. So if you talk about orbitals of nickel, oxidation state of nickel is plus two. Okay. So first we will just write down orbitals of nickel. That is it is argon 3d8. Okay. 4s2 and it is 4p0 for the time being okay so just draw that okay and fill the electrons that you have so when you fill the electrons you can see that you have eight electrons in the orbital so one two three four five follow the hunch rule always six seven eight so it has two unpaired electron your s orbital has two electron and p orbital is empty so when you talk about orbitals of ni plus 2 so if i just make it plus 2 okay from where will you remove the electrons from the outer orbital which is nothing but your s so s will become 4s0 remove this electrons okay so this is how the orbital of nickel plus 2 will look like without hybridization okay now if you want to undergo or if you want to carry out hybridization First, you need to decide which orbitals you are going to take. Okay. So now, you know that chloride is a weak fill ligand. Okay. And ligand will always come with a pair of electron. Okay. And each orbital has a capacity of only two electrons. Right. So a weak fill ligand cannot push this electron over here. Okay. Spin pairing cannot be caused. If it is a strong fill ligand, what will happen? This electron will shift here and you will have something like this. If it is a strong fill ligand, then you can use this D orbital for hybridization. Okay. But now because chloride is a uh, sorry weak fill ligand, this phenomena does not occur. Okay. So the D orbital over here cannot be used. Okay. So which orbitals are available for the time being? You have this S and you have this P. So they will undergo mixing and recasting. Okay. That is they will undergo hybridization okay to give you orbitals of equal energy so your hybridization will be because one s orbital is mixing and three p orbital is mixing you will get the hybridization as sp3 why do you need that number how many chloride ion do you have you have four right so you need four orbitals for keeping their electrons so we have taken four orbitals for keeping their electron okay so let's see then hybridized ni okay if i say ni plus 2 then how it will look like it will look like 3d8 let it be as it is okay 4s0 4p0 but sorry for hybridized orbital you will not write down that so 3d8 is okay this will be as it is the other four has mixed so each one of them is sp3. So this is 4 sp3 hybridized orbital. Okay. Now what are they used for? They are used for keeping the electron of chloride. So if you say a complex that is NiCl4 minus 2. How will the electron look like? 
okay so you have eight electrons in d so one two three four five six seven eight they will remain as it is okay but have a look at the other one you will have one cl second cl third and fourth so these are all coordinate bonds of your cl minus so that is what we meant by saying that the ligands will keep the pair of electron in the empty orbitals of your central metal atom so your s and p orbital over here belongs to your central metal atom or ion yes or no right and you can see the ligands has placed the electron in this empty orbital okay via a coordinate bond is this clear and therefore we say that the hybridization of this complex i repeat the hybridization of this complex is sp3 okay so first now we know the hybridization if the hybridization is sp3 what is going to be the geometry of the complex we said if if it is sp3 the geometry of the complex is going to be tetrahedral is this clear it is a tetrahedral complex next thing whether it is an inner orbital complex or outer or orbital complex this you will use when you are using d orbital but you can see in this case we haven't used any d orbital so let's not talk about it okay next magnetism do you have any unpaired electron over here okay just check do you have any unpaired electron over here yes you do have unpaired electron okay therefore your complex is going to be paramagnetic okay and if it has unpaired electron okay in d orbital i repeat it has unpaired electron in d orbital then it is also going to be colored so you can see that vbt okay explains so many concept when it comes to coordination compound right first vbt uses hybridization concept second it tells you why the orbitals has similar energy okay and different orientation in space that is geometry okay next it talk about the magnetism it talk about the color and it talk about whether it is an inner orbital or outer orbital complex and hence it also talks about the stability of the complex and formation of a complex let's solve few more examples let's solve the second example that is nico4 okay this looks similar to nicl4 but there's some difference let's notice what's that again start with your oxidation number so for nickel the oxidation number is zero second guess the type of ligand so it is a strong field ligand so it can cause a spin pairing third write down the oxidation okay um sorry write down the electronic configuration of your nickel that is orbitals that nickel has so orbitals of ni0 okay so it has 3d8 4s2 and 4p0 okay now because it has zero oxidation state this is what we are going to use for the complex okay so draw the orbitals fill the electrons that is eight electrons that you have okay then you have two electrons in s and your p orbital is completely empty now because you have a strong field ligand what will happen spin pairing will happen so first you have to do the spin pairing okay since strong field ligand present therefore we are doing something called as therefore spin pairing occurs okay this is very important don't forget this okay therefore spin pairing occurs next do the spin pairing and then do the hybridization okay so now after this you will have nickel okay zero which will look like okay just draw the orbitals what happens spin pairing is push the electrons behind and do the pairing as much as possible okay so if you have even number of electrons i repeat if you have even number of electrons all of them will be paired but if you have odd number you will have unpaired electrons left okay okay so have a look so here if you see it is 8 plus 2 10 so almost all of them will be paired so have a look this was shift here okay so this was already there which was paired okay but this electron is shifting here so this is paired and the electron from this will go here okay i repeat this is your spin pairing okay so push the electron backward 
so here you have done one spin pairing the electron from s has again entered here so your 3d is right now 10 but s orbital is empty now so you have 4 s 0 and you have 4 p 0 right and this electron will undergo hybridization i repeat this orbitals will undergo hybridization that is 1s and 3p okay and after hybridization how they will look like so hybridized nico4 let's make the complex okay so how they will look like you will have 3d10 these are not hybridized they are just there okay s and p are mixing so you have four hybridized orbitals so here you will have electrons of carbon monoxide you have four carbon monoxide fill as per hans rule okay i'm doing it right now just because i want to be fast okay i repeat these are four sp3 hybridized orbitals of nickel okay in zero oxidation state is this clear so nicl4 also had tetrahedral geometry this also has tetrahedral geometry but what is the difference okay have you noticed there is no unpaired electron present over here i repeat there is no unpaired electron present over here so if this complex is sp3 hybridized therefore it has a geometry which is tetrahedral since no unpaired electron is present, it is a diamagnetic complex. Okay, and since no unpaired electron is present, it is a colorless complex. So try to predict this for almost all the complexes that you solve, okay, via balance bond theory. Now we have taken examples for tetrahedral, two of them. Let's talk about octahedral complexes.